Thank you very much. It's good to see you tonight again for the last one. It's chapter 15. It's a very nice one. We call it the story of Joseph. It's just like a wrap up of everything we've said until now. And as I've already said, you know that uh, when we read all these stories of, of successful people and even and Joseph, you know, we all like the, the beautiful part and, and what's it, uh, you know, in what it ends up, you know, and all the beauty in it and what, what he's done for the world and, you know, but, but, but there's lots behind it. It is not just the beauty or the successful part is not the, it's not the only story. That is the manifestation of the success. But it's a real life behind it that is necessary. That we don't always like, you know, or it's, because maybe number one, it is not something that is very quick and easy. It is a process. Everything that is really worth it takes time. You know, and, and God needs time to sort of form you and me. I think of the life of Moses, you know, Moses came to his, let's say, his glory or creative purpose when he was 80. The same of Joshua, when they were 80. So it took God 80 years to bring them there. Uh, I hope you have enough years yourself. But, uh, but, but, but maybe Joseph, Joseph will give us more hope because he was 30 when he became the second in charge in in Egypt, right? he was 17 when he was taken away, and he was 30 when he became second in charge, and he was, he was the, uh, the, the, what is it, second in charge in Egypt, the governor, for 80 years. Uh, that is already a long time. So it's also one thing to get to your creative purpose, it's another thing to stay there and to excel in it, and to live it. You know, it's one thing to just get to, into the door of the home, but you need to live in the whole home. You need to live the whole story. So when you get into the story, it is not the end of the story. Then it's only the beginning of the story. And, 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 and uh, maybe you need to rethink your own life in terms of that, because we think so much, you know, in terms of this process, when we have lots of problems, just to get sort of to a place where it gets better, you know, but when it gets better, it is not the end. It is only the beginning of a new phase. Okay, so here we have in chapter 15 the story of Joseph. Oh, I think most of you know the story of Joseph. You can read it in Genesis 37 to 45. It is the story where, where he grew up with, with his father Jacob, and had four wives and twelve sons. Uh, 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 not two wives, four wives. Yeah, yeah it's four, that's right. Uh, his mother was Rachel, and there was two sons, Benjamin and him, and he was the last of all the sons, and um, and so he was, you know, what is it? Uh, this maybe the little bit of a spoiled boy. The fa his father liked him very much. He was the he was the son of his old age, as the Bible tells us, and uh, and then the, uh, in this, we uh, was about seventeen. He had two dreams, you know, you know the dreams where there was the sheaves and. And all the sheaves bow before him, and then he saw the, you know, the moon and the the, the sun and whatever, and all things bow before him, you know, and uh, he shared it with his brothers, and they weren't so excited, you know, as he was excited, because your dream will always excite you, and you want to tell it for someone else, but that is your problem number one in life, is that you're not supposed to tell your dream to everyone, because because most people will not understand your dream. So he told to them, and they think, listen, you just, uh, whatever, you know, let's, let's uh, sell him to the Islamites. Uh, it was a pilgrimage, people that was passing by into Egypt, you know, let's get rid of this, this, uh, this funny boy in the family, without the oldest brother's con consent, Reuben. So he was, he was, he was sold. So, so the story of Joseph actually started with a dream. And that is what life is all about. Your life starts out with a dream because you are a dream yourself. You are God's dream. He sent you to earth because you are His dream. And what you need to live on earth is His dream for you. Because He's got your unique place for you. And, and He will show it to you. He will tell you, listen, I want you to do this and this and this and this. You know, but, but it's one thing to see the dream from zero to one hundred. You know, but you need to start with zero, because when you see the dream, you are actually at zero. You are not at 55 or 100, you know, but it's a problem when, when God shows you his dream, he will actually only show you the, you know, the, the outline of the dream. He will not show you the, the detail, because you will get the detail as you go on the road. 
He will, he will show you the detail because Joseph didn't expect anything of what happened to him was actually part of the dream. God showed him actually some, something that will happen eventually and, and whatever, you know. And, and, and at the end of the day, he, he was very disappointed in a certain sense in what started to happen in his life. But remember, you are a dream also yourself. You need to know what is the dream in your heart. The dream in your heart is a blueprint in your heart. The biggest problem you can get to yourself is sharing it with people and other people's opinions that will differ from you, that will criticize you, that will actually kill your dream. Because they don't understand it. You need to share it with people that's mature in themselves, that's living their own dreams, that will understand where you are in your dream and what needs to get you to your dream. And that's not very, 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 you know, they're not all, in, all over the world, those type of people. You need to be very careful with whom you share your dream because it's a very personal thing. And it, it, it sounds to the other people like, you know, you think you're the best and you're the leader and you're the whatever. And uh, I mean, Joseph, it wasn't his idea to be their boss or this or that, you know, but he didn't have the capacity or maybe the character to share it on the right way also. Maybe we want to maybe we'll brag a little bit with what we know God is going to do in our lives. You know, and that's all problems that we, that we encounter on this way of start to living the dream. Because the more you, you do the wrong thing, the longer the dream will, will, will linger to start to manifest. So point number one is you must know your dream because you are the dream. But number two is you must be careful with whom you share your dream. And you must also know what's going to happen with you when you start to live your dream. Because when I listen to people that are successful, you will see that all people go through certain phases in life. Like you have the 10 steps or the 10 tests in Joseph's life to come to, to, uh, to, his, um, to the manifestation of his, of his dream. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay, so uh, in this dream Joseph saw that he's a ruler. And listen, in every, every person's life, we are supposed to be a ruler because God created us as kings. God's dream for you is that you're going to be a ruler in something in life. What is the something? I don't know. He will tell you. He will not tell me. But the point is, is that he heard correctly from the Lord. He's going to be a ruler. But that was not supposed to be that the other people are not rulers. We are all rulers. And you must, un you must find that place where God has called you to be the ruler because you were created as a king with a mandate, with a purpose, with something to do to serve other people, to better the life of people on this earth. But, but knowing that when I know that I was born to be a ruler in a certain area, it does not mean that I am a bit more than you and you must submit to me and you know, all that type of thing. No, no, it's got nothing to do with that. Because you are also a ruler in a certain aspect where I need to come and let, let's say submit myself that you can teach me in your area as I teach you maybe in my area. But we still remain all rulers that's got a dream in us. Because you are the dream, the dream is in your heart, it is actually a blueprint in your heart. Sunday I was speaking to someone, you know, and the guy said to me, no, you know, you must change careers. He said, run about my age or whatever he said, but... He just didn't know. He could see, you know, he was fighting this thing. I said, listen, look me in the eyes. This thing is going to haunt you till you die. It's the only way to get rid of it. Die. Or do it. There's no other way. <laughs> you just make up your mind. Will you sort that all the questions before it? No. Because God will not give you all the answers. Because then it's just a nice way, you know. Let me open up the Red Sea for you. And then you can decide if you want to go through. No. Go for the Red Sea. And if you have the faith that this is my voice, when you step into the, to the need, the need will supply, and I will supply in that need. I will open up the sea. You better move. And I'm not telling it as if, you know, I realize it in my own life, how many times I linger and waver, you know. Till basically two years ago, I made, up, I made up my mind and I said to myself, listen, 30 years ago, the Lord has said this. I've asked so many opinions of people that I started to compromise on what the Lord has sent me to do. I return back to 30 years. I'm going to do it now. And since then, things just start to happen. It's as if the Lord starts, started to run and I'm just keeping up. It's no longer me that's running and He's doing it. He's running with me. You just keep up. 
Why? Because you need to make up your mind concerning yourself. Point number one in success. Who are you? You, you, must, you must make up your mind in such a way that you come to a point where you say, I, it's, it's not that you write off other people. Listen, you never do that because we're part of a community. We're part of relationships. But no person has the right to define you. Only God has the right to define you. You cannot give that thing to someone else. Not even your wife or your husband. They will maybe help you a lot. But only God can define you and you must sit with Him and, and make a commitment to what He's telling you in your heart. And He will tell you things that's going to challenge you, but you need, to, you need to either go for it or die. Because it's the only way to get... Because if you don't do it, you, you run into frustration. And it is your own creative purpose that starts to frustrate you because it's knocking on your door every day. What about this? What about this? You know, what about this? You know, this yeah, but no one has ever tested it. No one will be able to do it. No, what about this? You know, you know, this problem just don't go away. The problem is constantly knocking at your door to seek a solution for it. You know, but no, 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 no. People will think, well, no, no. What about you? What about you? Because it's the blueprint on your heart. You cannot run away from yourself. You must live what is in your heart. But as you, as you make a commitment to yourself, we've already said there's a process in which you must go now to, to uh, start to get education and skill and activation and, and start to write the tests that will give you promotion in this life, that will start to train you. Uh, remember that we said, please note that the focus and the content of the dream is never to exalt you, it is to serve the people in the world. The end of the dream of Joseph was that he had to, he had to become the governor so that he can build the barns and the stuff and the seven years, the good years, so that he can get the grain, so that they can feed the world in the next seven years. The purpose was not to become the governor. The purpose was to, to get the food together. Remember that. So, so see clearly what's going to happen. Yes, there's going to be, let's say, a position, an authority, a place or a whatever. But that's not the big purpose. That's just the, the, the positioning of your life so that you can do what you were sent to do. And whatever you, going, you were sent to do is to serve other people. It's to, it's to enhance the life of other people. It is not to become... Famous, and that everyone can know about me, you know, and that I can have a position where I can take money and get more money and a higher salary or whatever. No, the purpose is always so that you can serve the people. And we know what, what's happening in our country with people that grab for themselves positions, you know, in government so that they can help themselves and not helping other people. It looks very nice, but let me tell you, whatever you sow, you reap. When you see the lives inside, I guarantee you, you will not like what you see behind the curtain. Although it looks so nice, you know, to maybe take a million or two a year, whatever, a hundred million. It looks nice, but whatever you sow, you will reap. It's important that we need to emphasize this point. You can never, never mani manipulate the process of the school of life. Never. If the school of life, whatever you may call it, I believe the school of life is designed by God with His laws and principles and stuff so that He can train you to become that person. Joseph was 13 years, in, uh, basically 13 years in prison. What do you think would happen on 17, you know, that they saw this dream and, and a month later he was the governor in, in, in Egypt? What do you think would happen? I, I don't think you would... He would uh, be able to handle that job. He had to go through 13 years where the school of life had to form him into the, to, to the man that can handle the position, the success, the money, the responsibilities and everything that was connected to it because it was not for the position, it was for the job and serving the people and the world. And he was not there at 17. So you need to trust that what happened in your life is not always nice, as was in his life not nice. It was far from nice. But you must always handle it and have an attitude towards it that, that maybe the devil brought it, maybe the life brought it, maybe the winter brought it, you know, maybe whatever other person brought it, you know. You can have lots of reasons to excuse it, but you cannot undermine it that it came along your way. 
and it's in your life, and you don't maybe even have an answer why it's there, but you have to embrace it and say, listen, nothing is going to happen that's not going to help me to form me, to be that person what is part of my creative person, to bring me to that point that the person that I really am in the inside can start to manifest on the outside. Life will, all, will, life will make you better or better. If you look at the school of life and you, you, you are negative concerning the things that come to you, you will, be, you will get better. But if you embrace it as God's opportunities for promotion and to form you and to train you, you will end up a much better person. Not that you will become something on the outward, yes, but that's what you already are. The school of life is to train the inner person to manifest on the right way. That's all. And in that school of life, there are some things that you, that you need, you know, that you need to get. From the outside, we look to the school of life and we, we you know, we call it things like uh, circumstances, unfairness, unrighteousness, lies, misunderstanding, dying to self-interest, isolation, disappointments, you know, uh, temptations, uh, self-defense, self-exaltation, servanthood. You know, we call it lots of words. But in God's school of life, it is actually tests that you need to write. For promotion for the next step. That's what it is. Yes, it's maybe not fair, but it's not but life is not fair. But God is fair. The thing in you is fair, and you need to understand that you need to come to that point where you where the school of life will get rid of everything that's in you that can hinder this process. You see, everything in the school of life is there to to, to sort of uh, 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 steal the outside from you and bring you back so that you can focus upon what is in you and that you can start to evaluate what is in you in such a way that you are willing to, to, to give away all your rights, your rights to this, am I right to this, am I right, you know, and whatever. I mean, I, 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 I think today, you know, I mean, if you have seen how we have stayed, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me. I mean, we stayed in places that's that's half this, this, this place. I mean, that was our homes. We stayed years for that. And the reason for that is that we've always talked about it. So we can do, we can do much better. But at the moment, that's only what we can afford in the light of where we're going. You know, and look where we're staying now. <laughs> you know, but, but what, what's, the, what's the school of life? The school of life is not to rob you from anything. Because God wants to give everyone what, what is needed. But the school of life wants you to bring you to a point where you evaluate what is in you much more than what's on the outside. And where you are willing to give away your right for the big this and the nice this and the nice this. But eventually you will get it back. If you give it away, God will give it back to you. Because that is what the school of life is all about. It's not for you to fight for it, to go for it, you know. I've been talking to many successful people. You know, then you come in their houses, you see these beautiful places. And when you start to talk to them, you, you get to the understanding that, listen, they're not living for this. Mm -hmm. They never planned it. It was an outflow of the life they, des they, they planned to live. And that life was not to buy a big house and this. No. They, they had something, I, I must do this so that I can help this, 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 this. And eventually the thing brought a lot of money and now they can stay like this or whatever, you know. It was never the focus. The outward things... You can say it's your human right, but the school of life will take you to a place where you lay down your, your right. Not, let's say, for the sake of the kingdom, if we you know we can have many, many vocabulary, but you need to lay it down for that thing that's in you that you need to live. Whatever that thing is. It can be very spiritual, more, less spiritual. It can be a, the, the, to be found, to find a patent. You know, it can be... And write a book, it can be anything, anything in life in terms of the seven relationships. It can mean anything of that. It doesn't need to be a highly spiritual thing if you can say it like that. Uh, people say, I must, I must, I'm a doctor, you know, but I must, I must go and go full time into ministry. See, but are you not full time already? I mean, there's very few people that's helping people as effective as you're doing at the moment. <laughs> I mean, you've got even the opportunity to talk to them, you know. Don't think of the, don't think that way because all people are in the business world or making money and all people are in ministry or doing something serving some other people. That's the normal thing. We don't run away from making money because that is a bit evil, you know. No, it's nothing evil to it. It's part of the kingdom. 
You're supposed to make money because whatever you want to do needs to be paid. Who's going to pay it? Someone needs to pay for it. Okay, but that someone is actually you. And maybe people will help you, but it will start out that you will pay for everything that you uh, want to want, want to do. Okay. So, so just to close down, the school of life, you cannot manipulate it. You cannot skip it. You cannot decide for it. You must come to a point where you say to yourself, I trust God, you know, even as the Bible says, even if there's nothing in the house of what, you know, I trust Him that I will stay on this road, whatever He set out, what I know He has given me. Uh, I commit to what is in my inside for the life that's inside of me. And that is a very important thing. We are not in an experiment. We commit to what is inside of us and what we need to live. And I see in my own life, the more I commit focusedly to what is focusedly in my life, the more I see the manifestation of God and His provision and whatever. Why? Because that's, that's the way. That is how it's working. Uh, is everyone happy with it? No, but that's not the point. The point is other people will, 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 will what is a trip here? They will, uh, what is trip? Yeah. Yeah. They will trip you, that's right. <laughs> other people will trip you. Uh, and it's not that other people are evil, that's not the point, but every person has got its own opinion. You cannot live on other people's opinions. You need to live from the voice of God concerning you. That's the only voice that can feed you. It's the only voice, and that voice is in your heart. It's a blueprint in your heart that will speak to you every day of your life. Okay, in Psalm 105, verse 17 to 22, is a very interesting scripture that says that the word has found um, Joseph approved. It's actually saying that Lord had tested and refined Joseph unto a point where he, the Lord found him tried and tested. For what? For this job. Not for the position, number one. The position was needed for the job. The Lord found him tried and tested. That he had wrote his certain amount of tests to be released. No person can release you. Only God can release you. Yes, we, we ask people, we ask our parents, you know, but no person can really release you in, and train you in that sense of what, what the Lord Himself says. The, he showed Himself approved above the circumstances. The, the basics of this approved thing, people, is that Joseph came to a point where he, where he died to his rights, where he died to the world outside of him, where he died to the glamour that he could have and want to have, you know. He came to a place where he... Where he became true to himself that listen what is in me need to be lived and I'm going to live it and at that stage when he was in prison we'll come to it it wasn't a, he didn't know he would become the governor or anything he just decided to live this ordinary life in serving people because that was the most outstanding thing in the prison that basically from day one he started to serve the people and then make him the sort of the manager in the prison for so 13 years why? Because he realized this is what life is all about. I need to serve people and he served them. It, and eventually out of that was birthed all these other things. Because if you can learn the heart of servitude, you can find your creative purpose. Because it's not about you, it's about serving other people. So when, when we look at his life, you know, we see basically three phases happening to him. He got the dream, then he ended up in the pit. Okay? And then from there he ended up in the prison. That's even deeper problems, you know, deeper, <laughs> deeper whatever. And then he ended up at the throne, eventually, eventually. I mean, that's the, that's the, in, uh, at the end of the story. Okay, so, so as we've said, you know, there are a basic, there is a basic formula. We can see all these tests and stuff, you know, but the biggest problem is not to define it, it's to walk and live that road. Because it's a challenging road. It's a road that's going to challenge your deepest being. For where is your motives? Are you in this thing? Why are you in this thing? Are you really for me in this? The Lord will test you. Life will test you. And, it, and then listen, this has got nothing to do with Christianity in principle. I believe the Lord created the world. He built this thing into this whole system called life. The school of life and whatever. And everyone that really walked the road can get the prize. 
the Lord doesn't say, okay, you, because you're not a Christian, you can't get it. I mean, there's lots of people on earth that never served God, that live immaculate lives. Yet it's another thing when we talk about, you know, eternity and eternal life. But life is here for everyone on earth. We're supposed to live it. And we can live it. And, and it's, not, it's not that... Uh, that you need to be number one if you're supposed to be if you say you're a believer you're supposed to live it much better than the other people that's the other problem but we're not going to get into that but unfortunately the the believers wants to get rid wants to get away from earth you know and you're supposed to be here because your kingdom is on earth it's supposed to be here okay uh, uh, when we look at this 10 test, test that you need to see, you know, you will see all these 10, test, 10 tests in your life. It will maybe not always in this order, but it will, it will nearly be that in order. It can overlap each other. It's actually tests to, to train you, to form your character and to make you the, the, the person that can live that life that was set out for you. Okay, so test number one is called the pit. Joseph, Joseph had a dream. He, he, he completely handled it wrongly, he ended up in the pit. So what is the purpose and the whole, let's say, the whole lesson uh, behind the pit? Uh, they throw him into the pit. We, we've already said, you know, that he talked to the, to the wrong people. Uh, uh, dream is big, you know, they criticized him. They thought, you know, he was maybe bragging or whatever. But the, the pit is, in a, is, is also there to separate you from this world on the outside. There's lots of glamorous things in the world on the outside. But you will suddenly find yourself in a world where you are confronted with, with something that constantly narrow down your focus. Constantly this thing in your heart starts to talk to you. Okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? You don't see any longer the... Uh, it's as if you come into a situation where you actually don't see, let's say, all the, the glittering on the outside any longer as so glittering, you know, because you are actually... You find yourself in a situation where actually all the glitter of the other people is no longer glitter for you. Because you're confronted with a situation that is very dark, you're confronted to speak to yourself and to have a meeting with yourself in a very dark room, if you can say it like that, down in the pit, and the only light is from above. And you need to, you need to look at the light and ask yourself, you know, what am I really living for? I mean, am I going to go on this road, to go and stay on this road? Do I really believe that this is what I, you know, what happened to me to end up in this pit, you know, is really worth it? Uh, and I believe Joseph made the decision that although he hadn't the choice, that he, 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 had to, he had to, you had to go through the process of re-evaluating your whole life in terms of this pit. Maybe this pit is not always a once-off situation. It sort of comes through certain circumstances that you are that you're confronted to re-evaluate actually the beautiful things on the outside that is not wrong and all the things and all the possibilities of becoming, you know, this and doing this or whatever, but decide to live the life that's in the inside, whatever this life is all about. You know, in, um, at the end of the day, you know, he, he was, he was they, they took his cloak, cloak that his father made him, they dipped it in blood, they sent it to him, you know, they brought this whole story. I mean, they basically cut off his history, they sort of cut off his existence, you know. They, they brought his, his reputation basically to nothing, you know, you, you know, dead, you know, no one knows about you, no one actually cares any longer about you. And that's a very desperate situation, although that's uh, the beginning of the road. And uh, I remember these things in my own life, you know, when my own creative purpose started to confront me. Are oh, you went through this turmoil. It's like, it's like a turmoil, you know, that you constantly need to re-evaluate, you know, is this really worthy to live for this? Okay, we not just live, you know, and have this nice life, you know, and whatever, and maybe compromise here and there, but don't have all these troubles and things uh, that, that, that is in you. You have to sit in this pit and make up your mind absolutely. You have to make a commitment to really what is in your heart and what life is actually all about. I, I always see when people come into accidents and they're in hospital, you know, and they lie there, they rethink life, they rethink the whole thing, and that is, that is actually what the pit is all, all about. It's a deep, dark place where you have to redefine what is valuable for you in life, and what are you going to pursue, what's going to be your focus, and, uh, you, and what you, you're going to give your attention to.
What do you really believe in your heart? Okay, then they took Joseph out of the pit, and guess what? He was sold on a market to, to, uh, to Potiphar, and Potiphar brought him into his house and made him a servant. And that's the next phase, is that you need to understand that you are not here on this earth to seek for the high and the mighty and the whatever. You are here to serve people. It is, and you have to serve people without compensation, right? That's one of the things, because he was not compensated for anything there. You had to say, listen, I, it's, not, it's not wrong to get compensation, people. That's the, that's the thing. But the compensation must not drive my life, what I'm living. Because sometimes it will be there, and sometimes it will not be there. So I, I, had, to, I had to evaluate my life that, listen, compensation is not my motivation. You can get compensation, it's not wrong, it's, it's a biblical principle that the labor is worth his, his money. But the point is, is that you must come to a point and understand that your life is much more worth than any money. Whatever you can mean to people cannot actually be bought by money. It is, it is too worthy, it's, it, 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 the value is too high. And you need to understand that you actually need to work to until to the place where you one day going to give your services for free. I mean, let's say in a normal, because you need to become financially free, you need to come to a place where you say, listen, whatever I do, doesn't mind what your dream is, I'm going to pay for that dream, I'm going to bring it to a place where I can give it to the world actually for free. That doesn't say that you still cannot earn something. The point is, is that you must get rid of, of, a, of a mentality that I don't think, I don't do a thing if there's not compensation involved in it. Because it's a motivation and it is a, it's a setting in your heart. Uh, you, you need to get to the place where you understand that serving people will bring you to a place where you will get rewarded. In life you will never get paid correctly for whatever you give to people. But you will get rewarded by the Lord. That is important. And, and it's a very fine line to, to walk on. Because there's nothing wrong with conversation. It actually is just us. Where is, it, where is that place in your heart? Because I know, I know you know, I've, I, I remember times when I sat with people and then they said, listen, I can't talk to you. You know, my, my, my hour is worth uh, 700 rand, you know. And I thought, my goodness, I mean, maybe your hour is worth 700 rand an hour, you know. But actually what you're telling me, my hour is worth nothing. Yours is worth 700, you know, you can't give it to me. Well, if you can't give it to me, it's fine. I don't matter because it's your decision. But that's maybe a reason why you will never have relationships. And I remember that guy end up in losing all his relationships. Because you cannot do a relationship on that, on that basis. Because in relationships, it's not about, you know, how much are your worth and my worth of an hour or whatever. Not that it is not there in the business world. It is there in the business world. But I was not in a business transaction with him. I was just a friend, you know. So you need to sort out yourself, you know, when you are in business and when are you in friendship or where is what in this world. And, and, and get your heart clean about all these things and not be, be mixed up, if you can say it in that way. Uh, we've said life is not fair, but God is fair. What is the, you need to sit down and understand for yourself, what is the right thing to do? You know, you can complain and say, yeah, but this is not right, you know, they sold me for this, I didn't even get the money, now I'm here, you know, everything is unfair. You know, you can stand on your rights and say, this is my human right and whatever, yes, it's your human right, but the point is, you are not there. And somehow you, you need to give your rights over to God, to life, but some people say the universe. You need to understand there's a certain point in life where you cannot fight for your right, although you have a right. You cannot fight for it forever. That's one of the biggest things that the school of life wants to get out of you. Is that you fight for yourself. You're not here to fight for yourself. Someone else is supposed to fight your fight. That is the, that is the most... Uh, what is that? It's the, it's the thing that is the most wrong thing you can do in your life. Is fighting your own fight. I remember, you know, I've been in lots of situations myself. The moment you fight your own fight, I'm not saying that we don't sit at a table, you know, business-wise, we talk out a thing or whatever. But especially in relationships, things go wrong and this and that, and there can be even business in it, and we end up in a fight. You know, we can sort out things without having a fight. And the point is, the moment there's a fight, stop from your side. Because nothing is going to sort out from that point. 
Stop fighting your own rights because it will not happen for you. There's a place in life where you must, must come to a point where you are even willing to give away your right to just save the relationship. Because otherwise you're not going to save the relationship. You're going to win the fight and win the war and win the court case and, and lose the relationship. And that's, that's how it works. You need to come to a place where you say to yourself, listen, people are for me more important than this fight. Mm -hmm. and, if, and I'm even willing to go to a place where I will allow, allow voluntarily, it's not that I become the scum of the world, I will even allow people to walk over me, you know, put me in the pit, take away my reputation, but I will know that in time that will come, the Lord will restore it and bring it back to me. It is incredible. I've been through... Uh, numerous situations like this in my own life, in different situations. The moment you give something over and you say, listen, I, to go further I need to go into a fight and I'm not going into a fight. Now I give it over. I draw a line. It's out of my life. Then it comes back to you. Because, because you make a decision for the person and for the relationship that is much more important for God Himself and, and in life than just winning something in life. It is, you need, you need to get that order correct. Okay, um, that was the, the second test in his life, was servanthood. Serving even without being acknowledged, without nothing, getting nothing out of it. But as was with, uh, what is it, with, with Joseph, everything prospered in his life, wherever he was. He, he lived an excellent life because he decided to live it, despite whatever the circumstances are. Because to get to the place, hear me now clearly, the biggest thing you need to conquer to get to the place of that position that was given to him is to conquer the outside world. To conquer all the beauty in the outside world. To call, conquer all the rights of the outside world. To conquer meaning that you come to a place where you know this is all part of my life. I can partake of it, but it's not going to rule my life. I'm going to live this thing inside above circumstances I'm not going to allow circumstances okay I'm now in this house you know I'll just do the I'll just do the basic stuff you know no he excelled everywhere because he did everything as if for the Lord and he did it he said because this is what I'm living wherever he was he did it why because his motivation was not his outward circumstances it was his inward conviction that's how why he ended up on the throne because he conquered the outside world through his inward decisions and commitment and convictions. To live the inward heart despite whatever might happen on the outside. This is what, who I am and who I will always be. And people will get to know me like that. Uh, and Okay, so, and the next one is the morality test. Uh, we have a slogan here, you know, from the dream to the pit to the prison to the throne. Uh, Joseph was even going, in, in living the best life on earth, he was still going down. You know, now he was in this life of Potiphar, and you know the whole story of his wife that wanted to sleep with him, and he threw off his coat, you know, and whatever, and she said, she screamed, and she said, yeah, but he attacked me, and this, and this, and this, and the end of the story was that he was thrown into prison. I mean, knowing from his side that he was absolutely innocent. I mean, this is, this is now serious stuff. I mean... You know, he says, if, I mean, I really can hear him saying, Lord, you know, I've done everything for you. You know, I've, I've lived this life, you know, and what do I get out of this? I mean, I even end up in prison. He end up in prison for 13 years. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, never getting an answer to it. Never, never said the Lord, okay, just hang on, you know, I've got something big for you. No, no. The only thing he had to stick to was his dream. That was his only hope. The only, I mean, it wasn't the New Testament where the Holy Spirit was inside, you know, we had a nice conversation, you know. He had only had his dream, that was the Lord's last words to him, was this dream. You stay true to this dream, you stay true to what's in your heart. And he still lived this life in Excel, he became the, the manager or whatever in, 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 in uh, uh, okay, now, sorry, we are now in, the, in the, the morality test before we get to the prison. So love, and on this stage, life really got rough. You know, this is this is tough. This is not, this is not very easy. He's, and and the big thing in this is that he had to make a decision to stick to the principles of what he know is the right thing. 
You see, there's many things that we can say, you know, but, you know, I, I always think in life, you know, I'm not here to tell you, okay, let's say the law of the God, and you must, you must, you must, you know, so, you know, you must come to a point where you decide what is, what is this thing in life, you know, what is, what is right and what is wrong concerning business, concerning morality, concerning integrity, concerning what, 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 whatever. You need to make that decision for yourself, to yourself. To live that and stay true to it, despite of people see you or don't see you or whatever, because that's integrity. And maybe you say, I do it for the Lord, and that's fine. I believe I do it for the Lord, because I believe it's Him that's setting it out. But it, that's not even the thing. The thing is, you need to decide it for yourself, and you need to make a commitment to yourself that this is what I'm going to live. Because the morality test is, is actually all about, are you going to stick to what you believe is the truth? And what is right and what is wrong. Because you will get to situations where you, maybe because of your position, one day you can let some stuff slip through, you know, and whatever, and you know, all the wrong. But, but the Lord will not promote you, to, and the school of life will not promote you to that position if you haven't written that test. Because in, in the one day position, or the thing that's coming, you have the opportunities for that. But the only thing that's controlling you is you is that you have made a previous commitment that this is what I'm going to stick true to. For me, this is right and this is wrong. And if I am a servant in the, in the prison, or I am the, the king of uh, or the whatever of Egypt, this is still the same principles. And, and you know, you can argue with the principles, you can say a lot of things. I've seen many people arguing with the school of life. Yeah, but it's not written like this and it's not supposed, you know, I'm not here to tell you that thing. You must sort it out for yourself. But let me tell you one thing. You can't argue with the school of life. You cannot, you cannot argue with something, I mean, people say it's fine or whatever, but if the school of life is not saying it's fine, it's not fine. <laughs> you know, you can say, yeah, but you can take a little bit of money or this or this, you know. But the school of life say, no. And the point is, the point is, you need to stick to what you believe, and it's not about legalism, you know, it's not about the law of Moses or whatever. It's about you need to define your life and the principles of life for yourself, and you need to make a commitment to yourself that this is what I'm going to live. Whatever the Lord gives me. You know, I, I, I look at myself in this house, I always say to Marianne, you know, we, we were always staying at other places, then we bought our own house. I said to her, there's one thing that I can see in people. How do people live? Do you live in your rented house as if it is your house? I can see, I can see. The moment someone lives in someone else's house as if it is his house, he treats it as his house, you know. I've got such a, I've got one of those uh, tenants, you know. I mean, you would surely believe, you know, he's talking about my house and my, 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 you know, why? I mean, the place looks so beautiful. I mean, you don't ever get there because he fixes everything, you know, he, he, he beautifies everything, you know. It's, it's an absolute, you know, these people, you can see them going forward in life. Why? Because it's a principle in the inside. And I mean, I always say to Marianne, I can't stay in a place. And live there if it's, it's not my house. If I stay there, it is my house, even though it's not on my name. You look after it as if it's your place. You, you, you fix it, you everything. Why? Because it's a principle. It's a kingdom principle. Because you will never get yours if you don't live like that. That's the point. That's the way how you get there. You know, but okay, yeah, but I'm paying rent, so I'll get something out of you. you know, maybe this door, this door break, and yeah, let's kick it, you know. Don't worry, you know. I'm paying enough, you know. No, 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 no. You will not get promotion that way. It's not working that way. You need to make out for yourself uh, what is relationships all about, what is the right thing, what is the wrong thing, and you need to stick to it yourself. But make sure that what you have decided is really what the school of life agrees also to. Uh, because if the school of life does not agree, it will not work for, for you. But we don't go to a place of of legalism. It's not about legalism. Uh, I, I, I've, I live a very disciplined life, but it is not a legal life. I, I, I don't think about laws. Yes, this whole world is laws, but it's not a law. I don't think of laws from the outside. It's laws from the inside. The law is in my heart. Every, all the laws is in me. 
uh, and I need to live that law. Okay, so so the, we, that was number number four. Number five is the reputation thing. After all these things that he did right and whatever, he ended up in prison. You know, there now everything was really gone. You know, there was no reputation. People totally forgot him in prison. No one ever knew that he lived. Even the people that put him there was there. Only the people that knew about him was the people in the prison. No other person knew anything about Joseph in that prison. And he excelled in the prison by living that life from the inside to the outside. Um, so, so you need to ask yourself, you know, am I doing this for a good reputation that people, or people's opinions or this or that, you know, or am I doing this because I am just true to who I am? And this is who I am. Even though I will live for the rest of my life in this prison, this is who I am. If the Lord or the school of life cannot get me out of here, well, then it's one of those things. Because I cannot get myself out of here. Okay, so you need to, you need to understand that the prison is cutting deep. I mean, to be forgotten is not an easy thing. And it's one thing to be rejected, but at least they know you, you know. At least they even think about you, you know. Because it's a thing that's hanging in the air. But to be totally forgotten is another thing. No one knows. To sit in a prison and you know that no one actually knows that you are still there. It is not a nice place. It is really coming to a place of, I'm not, I'm not really believing in dying self, but you, you really die to everything that is, you know, that is not human, if you, but not part of humanity. You start to live and say, life is all about giving today something for someone else, helping someone else. Uh, that's his only opportunity there in the prison. But realizing, I believe the only reason why he could conquer the prison was that he always realized that the life inside of him is bigger than the prison. And if you realize that the life inside of you is bigger than the prison, the prison is actually not keeping you in there. You know, you're no longer a prisoner. Yes, the prison is keeping you in there in terms of geographically, it doesn't allow you to go outside. But you're actually a free person in the prison. Because you are no longer imprisoned, you know. Because you, you, will, you will even stay here if it's possible, because you have found a life inside of that prison. A life where you could give yourself, where you serve other people. You see people coming to understanding themselves and get helped in the prison. You find there a life, and the moment you understand that life is not being in a pit or outside a pit, in a prison, not in a prison, having a reputation, not having a reputation. Life is about knowing who you are and what you must do and doing it. And he did it, even in the prison, because no one could stop him by, 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 by reaching out to other people and be something for someone else. Therefore, he, he conquered prison by living the life that he is himself in prison. And sometimes we say, yeah, but I can't live my life, you know, because the government and because the economy and because the, 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 the. Listen, let's put you in a prison for 10 years and everyone forget about you. And then you conquer life. Then you live the life that's inside of you. Nefrana, then we start to sing. I mean, they're all in the, in the prison. Why? Because no one and nothing can imprison you. Imprisonment is something that's in your mind. No one can stop the life and the flow of life in you except you. And the moment you find that place, whatever the circumstances of imprisonment may feel like or look like, it will break down somehow and, uh, along the road. It won't be able to keep you inside. And then something happened in the prison. There was the, what is it, uh, 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 as we said, it's, it's, it's in the prison. Uh, uh, let's, let's just say there's something. They, they need to come a place of absolute surrender in the prison, you know. Surrender of your life and just to, to, to be, what is it, satisfied with this basic life that you live day by day to help someone else. No one else basically about knowing it, but this is the basicness of life. It's just to stand up, be what you are and walk unto someone else and be something for someone else. That is the, that's being broken down to the most basics of basics. It's not that the Lord doesn't want you to have more. The problem is that people want to have more, but they lose, they, they've lost themselves along the road. It doesn't help to get to the position, 
but you can't do the job and you don't want to do the job because you just want to enjoy being the governor, you know, the parties and all the food and whatever and you've forgotten why you're there. Or maybe you're there but you can't do what you're supposed to do there. That's the, that's the average situation we, we find um, in people's lives. Okay, for the next stage, number seven, is long-suffering. Long-suffering. Uh, I mean, we're still in a downward spiral. In prison, now it's, now it's, for, now it's going... Uh, the, the, the first phase in prison, there was two phases in prison. The first phase was uh, ten years in prison. And then eventually, well, let's just look at the uh, ten years is a long time. Eh? <laughs> okay, but long-suffering, you know... They, there's four words that's connected to each other. Patience, long-suffering, endurance, perseverance. Remember what we've said in our formula? Grit. You need to have persistence, perseverance, long-suffering, knowing that things are not happening overnight. Time is involved in this whole thing. Anything that is of good quality is not produced overnight. It, is, it takes time. I mean, a pearl takes time to be formed. You must understand to form this... This inner qualities in you, it's in there, but to get it out in a manifestation that will feed the world takes time. And unfortunately, you know, we feel like, you know, the Lord has got eternity, but you know, my lifespan is 40, 80 years. You know, the Lord has got too much time and I'm not enough, you know. <laughs> but still, it takes time to, for things to, to happen in your life. The word long-suffering means to have a long patience. It's, to, it's the ability to suffer for a long time and not give up upon yourself. Not give up upon what you believe you are and what is the right thing for you to live. It means it is, it is a composition of the two words, namely long and tempered. It actually means to be long-tempered. Long-tempered. To be long-suffering then is to have self-restraint when one is stirred to anger. A long-suffering person does not immediately retaliate or punish, rather he has a, lo a long fuse and a patiently forbears. You know, because in that situation in prison, you know, there was all the right from the outside to feel, you, to feel I, I'm, I'm treated unrighteously. You know, I'm here innocent and whatever, and to, to, to get angry about it, you know, to... To start to rebel, you know, and to start to scream and being a nuisance that everyone can know, you know, that I'm here and all this or this. And he didn't do it. He, he, he stayed true to himself. He didn't went to that place where he allowed the anger that was stirred through the flesh, the unrighteous fleshly side of his story, if you can say it like that, to take over in his life. And still stay true to himself and to the dream that's in the inside. Because we also read in the Bible that people will only inherit the promises through faith and patience. Faith and patience. Doesn't that sound like the two things of the pillars of success? Faith in who you are and what you believe you are. And patience to go and live it and work it out in life. That's again, no promise from God will be inherited otherwise through faith and patience. You get it by believing that you have it, because that's what faith means. But then you need to have patience and live this life that was set out for you, and write your test, because you know that no one can steal this dream inside of you. Only you can. And you need to stay true to these principles of life. And it's just not that you become a, a weak lean in society, ach ja, you let life run over you. No, 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 that's not what it is all about. You know, I always remember when Marianne talked to women about uh, 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 submission, you know. You see this thing, you know. I mean, I mean you, you sound so weak, you know. You give in to a man, you, you know, you let your husband tell you what to do, you know. You tell me a story that if your husband feels that he, he, he now, 11 o'clock at night, you know, he would love to have cake, you know, you stand up and bake him a cake. I mean, that's like being trampled upon, you know. I mean, don't be weak like that. You tell him, you know, you tell him something, you know. But you don't understand that submission is a very strong thing. It is the ability to submit yourself under the need of someone else. That's stronger than having rulership. I mean, the woman is a far stronger figure, I believe, than the man. The man has got authority, but the woman has got submission. And submission demands much more strength than 
to rule, if you can say it like that. Because it, it demands that thing that is the heart of life. It is to, to submit your situation and rights under the need of someone else and to go and serve them. That is spirituality. You know, it, it doesn't take a lot of spirituality to stand here behind the pulpit and preach to you. It is a nice process. You study the word, whatever, you know, and you go and stand here, you find... But you know, to find spirituality, to stand up three o'clock for a baby that's got a... That's got a what is it, a diaper, what is it, that's full of whatever, you know, and, and then it keeps you busy for three hours, you know, and doesn't want to sleep, I mean, that's spirituality. I mean, you don't like it, you don't feel like that, it's not nice, but you submit yourself to the need of serving someone else. I tell you, that is a thousand times more spiritual than preaching a sermon, and stop, stop, Ooh, that, 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 you know, I, I, I can get whatever when I hear people, oh, that guy, you know, he's, he's my preacher, you know, he's, as if he's just out of heaven right now. I say, my friend, you haven't seen women, just go and see, a, you know, the average mum, you know, you will see someone out of heaven, I mean, much more than a preacher. Yeah. And I mean it, you know, because we need to understand that life is all about serving people, it's not about preaching to people. There's got a place for that, that's why I'm doing it. But that's, that, is, that is not the heart of life that everyone must become preacher or, or teacher. It's serving people. It's serving people. That's what it is all about. Okay. Uh, then the, the eighth test is that eventually the two people end up in prison. It was the, it was the butler and the baker of the king. And, uh, and uh, they had both of themselves dreams. And then Joseph could interpret their dreams. And he told the the butler that he will be released and the biker will be hanged and it all happened that way and guess what happened a, a, a very strange little thing happened that he told the biker when you leave prison don't forget me tell the king that I am here and I am innocent here <laughs> now what was that I mean I mean you would say man this is a chance of a lifetime at least I mean you've, you've done something for this guy you know he can at least do you a favor back and for that self-promotion or self, or yeah, self-promotion, you had to stay another two and two years and more in prison, because it's self-promotion. You know, it doesn't sound to us like that, you know. But in God's eyes, He said, "Listen, I know when is the time for you to get out. I can get you out here any day. Do you don't think that the heart of the king is in the heart of the Lord, and I can make him think? I mean, then the Lord gave the king a dream, you know." And no one could interpret the dreams, and a lot of people died because of that. And then, and then the baker, you know, not the, the butler, realized, oh man, there's some, someone in the prison. And then they fetched Joseph, he came and he told, he, he interpreted the dreams, and immediately the king was very impressed in making the second in charge. He gave him his signet ring, he said, do it, you know, you know, the seven years of bounty, and then the seven years of, of famine. And Joseph did it, and at the end of the day, he was, he, he was, uh, what is it, uh, he was out of it. But let's go, that was self, self-promotion. The number nine is honor and ego. Uh, you see that we live with an instant thing, you know, we want the honor and we want this, you know, and our ego is always involved in this whole thing. But, but at, the end of the, at the end of the day, you know, the point is, is that there is no just instant things that's happening really in the school of life. Yes, eventually things happen in an instance, but after a long process, things start to happen when, when you are ready. So the only person that's hampering the process is you that's not writing your tests. And the school of life will wait for you. Two years, ten years, twenty years, well, the school of life is patient all the way. Whatever is the test, you know if you're writing your test or not. And eventually, you know, you must get rid of this thing, you know, I need to get honored and I need to get this and people need to, to uh, know that it is me and this and this. Listen, you need to sort of disappear. Not that you need to disappear, but you need to get rid of the fact that everything needs to come back to you, if you can say it like that. No, we do it for the bigger picture, for the people, for the kingdom. It needs to go to a place. If you live the kingdom correctly, you will not on purpose make uh, fame, or what is the word? 
because you, you don't want it, because it's not a good thing in the kingdom for people to constantly mention you and you and you and you. You know, yes, people will know you, people will remember you, people will know what is going on, but you know, we, we put the focus on, on, on Jesus, we put the focus on the King. We don't put the focus on us and what we can do and everything, and we need to die to that thing, because it's a big hindrance in, in the creative purpose that's really in our lives. Uh, I, I, I read somewhere in the paper, you know, there's a pastor in South Africa, when he started to rain, he said, you, here it's raining, you know, because I am the rain prophet, and it's raining because I've solved South Africa's rain problem, you know. Take note, it's me. If there's any problems along the road, again, come to me. I am the rain prophet, you know. Now, what does that tell you? you know? <laughs> uh, it's me, 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 my, me, my, myself, you know. Me, me, me. Yeah, they say you, but you're actually not the center of the universe. You're only someone that's a servant around here. Uh, that, uh, what is it? In, in God's kingdom. Okay, and then we have, believe it or not, the, the biggest test of it all is number 10. Believe it or not, your biggest test in life will be in having success. We always say that you think, you know, you look at the person, you say that maybe, of maybe, what is it, uh, what is this guy, of whoever these big people are, you know, always say, yeah, but look at his success, look at him. Listen, they've got another set of principles or another set of problems, if you can say it like that. In coming to a place where you, where you actually reach success, the whole world just change into another mode. And then you had to handle and treat life in a different way. And your biggest challenge will be to adapt to the success you found. Because then maybe honoring is there, you know, and the money is there and whatever, and all the opportunities to do things the wrong way. But to handle success and stay true to what you are. You said, listen, this is not what I lived for. I'm not here that everyone can know I'm now the governor of Egypt or whatever. I'm here for a task. I'm here to do the task and to, and to live it. The, the position or the promotion is there for serving the people in a, just a much better way. And sometimes we see that people can't handle their success. I've seen it numerous times. Then they, then they don't attend to their relationships, you know, because, you know, I'm this big man, you know, I can buy whatever I want and drive whatever I want and don't attend to their, attend to their relationships. And guess what? And then everything goes on under them and then the... They say, okay, let's start again. Let we can learn what is really success all about. Success is not to boast about what you have and you've got and you can do and what you can decide. Success is in living that life that's inside of you. Nothing else is really success. Because you were set out for this and in living this, that's maybe another person's life, is not success. You will not get rewarded for things that was not set out for you to do. You was to mind yourself to the things that you that you know you need to do. Uh, he was governor Joseph for 80 years after that, and the fact that he got appointed as the governor for 80 years was just the beginning of the success story. All the things we've talked about, all nine tests, was just a preparation for the success. All nine tests was not nice. All of them was not really nice stuff. The success story actually, I mean, it's not that it wasn't part of it, it was the preparation phase. Now he was appointed, now the real job actually started. This is not the end of the road, this is now the beginning of the real road that was set out for you. Amen. Now you actually, you know, you've, you've got all the opportunities and wah, 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 to do the real thing that you were set out to do. You see, and, and we need to understand that, you know, and sometimes, you see, the moment we've arrived, especially in external stuff, you know, I've got my, I'm now a 10 million dollar, whatever, you know, I, I, I've reached it. No, yes, maybe you did, it's significant, it is fine, you know, but you're there for a reason. You, you know, whatever you think on the outside, the outside is not a success, it's only the means that will help you to live the real life that's in you to help other people. And not to stop short and start to celebrate and just enjoy the initial phase of the real success story. Because Joseph's real success story was the 80 years after that. 
That's the real success story. And, and his brother and his father coming back to him. And they're in Egypt and they live there and all the things and the reunification of the family and all those things. That was the real story that everything was set out for. Uh, the real story was that, that what we see was the preparation of Joseph. And it's actually sort of not always nice to read him. Okay, and, and the, the 80 years after that was what we call the legacy. That was the legacy. That was the real thing that he was, you know, he was, he was purposed to live. So understand clearly that although life must be hard, you know, you struggle, you suffer and whatever, yes, get through the test, get through the process, but there will come a day where the real success story will actually only start. Now I see most people, yeah, I've got my two cars, you know, I've got my house, you know, and my pension is basically in, in place, you know. You have made it. You've made it what? Where? You know. Yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, I applaud you for that. That's wonderful. I mean, I'm not against it. Uh, you, you're on the right track. But, but for what now? To retire. Mm -hmm. To retire and go and sit and do nothing and reach out to no one. That? No! My friend, you just now commissioned to start and live the real life. <laughs> the life that you actually maybe wanted to live your whole life long. You are now empowered to live, and the real story is actually starting now, and then we start to close down. And we leave no legacy, eventually at the end of the day. So, this is the story. And everyone has got, has got a story, and in all of our lives we will find a test uh, that is not, <laughs> it's, let me clear, it doesn't sound a nice road. <laughs> I won't say you will end up in a real prison, so I don't mind. But something of this stuff will happen in all of our lives, uh, in, in a certain sense. Forgotten, prison, rejected, people don't understand you, they talk against you, you know, they think you're a nuisance, let's get rid of you, and you know you've got something that can maybe even solve the problem, you know, and all these things, it's normal. But remember, you need to stay true to the story that's inside of you. Because only you can live that story. And it is worth it going through that phases that maybe no one else will know about it. But eventually come to that place where you can live that, that real success. Where you can really help people. Uh, not with the attitude, you know, when the brothers come there, I've told you, you know, you're going to bow down, you know. You will see to it that I'm really the governor. No, I don't think that was his attitude. Why? Because he was formed. He was so happy to find his brothers again. Why? Because he knew where God's real value was. It was in people, in relationships, in serving other people, uniting people, getting, you know, making progress for everyone. He knew that was the real success in life. Therefore he longed for that and he never misused his his position, you know, in terms of his family and whatever. Why? Because he knew that the only reason he got that position is because of God. And it's because of life has promoted him there. And he could fall out of that thing. He could. He didn't, but he could. He, he, he knew that he needed to stay in, in the right character and stay true to himself. Although he's the king and he can just say, listen, out with you and whatever. He knew this is not... This is not what this position is all about. It still remains to be a servant, even though it's in the prison, even though it may be from the throne, you are still a servant. That is what life is all about. So let us really see the, the true success of your life. The true success is the real you. Live it. Write a test because it's worthy to, for us to, to be blessed by the the gift that's in you that can serve all of us and help all of us and same from us to you and wherever. Thank you very much for being here and uh, I believe that you will have a real value upon what, 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 who you are and what your life was set out for. Thank you.